are ready. Welcome back, everyone, to the Abundance Street Podcast. I'm your host, Janice Luke, and I'm accompanied by my lovely co-host, April Capri. <laughs> what's up, Janice Luke? April Capri, what's going on, girl? I'm loving the ponytail. You wearing it up today? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's pretty curly. <laughs> Thank you, girl. You always look nice as well. So, Thank you. How how are you feeling today? <laughs> Good. I'm feeling great. It's it's the way I'm, I'm wearing. I'm getting um the last of my winter clothes out. Um, <laughs> so I got some sleeves on today, yeah. and um yeah, because it's getting hot quick. So it sure is. Spring is springing, spring is springing. Spring is springing, so. spring child. So really spring is summering down yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can relate. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah, so we have a very interesting guest tonight, so let's hear about him. He do, yeah. and he has a really cool name, but I'll tell y'all about that later. Ooh. He is a master of emotional selling and behavioral management with a background in advertising and a passion for understanding the power of emotional triggers he has worked with major clients like Kraft Foods and Timex Watches his journey to mastering emotional selling began with a revelation from author John Gray which led him to discover the profound impact of metaphors on persuasion so now he shares his insights with clients and students helping them achieve blockbuster results in business and beyond we have mr james bond that rhymes with business and beyond <laughs> i love it james it's meant to bond. be hey, james, james. Bond. <laughs> how, are james, you? April. Hi. how are you i'm awesome thank you and thank you for having me on the show this is your your podcast rocks Thank you so much. It's a, our our pleasure to have you on with us tonight. So absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Well, you have a good sense of humor, so I can do that. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> we, we're here for it. <laughs> that is, yeah. you have a pretty uh pro impressive um you know like rap sheet. Like you've done a lot. Um, I've never heard of emotional selling, but um, first, would you like to tell us about yourself and how you got started, like your journey? Sure. And in fact, emotional selling is the thing. My name is James I. Bond. I say James I. Bond because when you look up James Bond, you can never find me because I'm, you know, Sean Connery and all these other guys. <laughs> so that's uh, when somebody said, I love your book, but I can never find your name. So look up Jim Brain Glue. Um, I'm, I live in Southern California. I've lived here for about 37 years. I have a son and three daughters. We named our middle daughter. We gave her the initials L.A., Lauren Asia, A-J-A. -A. I so we'd remember how long have we been here, but I'm originally from Montreal and I worked my way up um, and uh, I had an advertising agency and I worked my way up and eventually won major clients like Kraft Foods, Timex Watches, Avon Cosmetics, uh, Seagram's. I'm not a drinker, but <laughs> we won Seagram's, lucky me. And we had all these bottles on Christmas time. Hey, guess what? There's 40 bottles. We take photographs and stuff and then they say, okay, you can have them. And I'm like, I don't drink. You know, so anyway. <laughs> um, but, and I had the opportunity to win the anti-drug campaign in America with powerful, logical reasons why you should not do drugs. And then we lost. And we lost because of emotional selling, not logical selling. Because we had the logical reasons why you should not do drugs. And the ad, I saw the ad and it was a guy holding an egg saying, this is your brain. And cracking the shell and dropping the egg into a sizzling frying pan. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? And you guys are nodding your heads because you remember I it. remember it, yeah. All of yes. us remember it, even though it was a gazillion years ago. It was such a long time ago, but it sticks in the brain. And when I saw the ad, two things happened. First is I recognize this is infinitely more powerful than my ad and our ads and what we know how to do. But second is it scared me because this is emotional selling. And I'm a logical person. How do you do emotional selling? How did they ever come up with this idea? And so I realized they don't teach emotional selling in, sc in school. And I did some research in a, in a library, but they don't, they don't talk about emotional selling, really. And so I decided, you know, the scientist in me said, let me create a box. Let me put a box right next to my computer. And I'll call it the passion box. And every time I see an ad or hear something, 
Like in this case, your brain on drugs, I'll write your brain on drugs on a three by five card. I love three by five cards, you know, because when you're wandering around the street or something, I go, oh, look at that. And I'll write it down, you know. If now we can photograph it with our, our cameras, you know, right. with our phones. But I wrote your brain on drugs on a three by five card and I put it in the passion box. And I said, I'm not going to overanalyze things, but whenever I see something, uh, see an ad or hear something that's emotionally powerful, rather than trying to overanalyze it, analyze it, let me put it in my passion box in the hopes that eventually I have so many examples that I'll be able to figure out how emotional selling works. Well, after about 10 years, we moved to Southern California and I met John Gray. And John Gray wrote this, he was telling me, he's an author, and he wrote this incredible book called Men, Women, and Relationships. And he was telling me how he was frustrated because he wrote this book and people who read it loved the book. They said, this is one of the most incredible relationship books I've ever read. It's helping improve our relationship. It's fantastic. He said, but almost nobody bought the book. And so he got this crazy idea. What if I changed the title of the book to men are from Mars, women are from Venus and tweak the content a little. So it refers to it throughout the book, but it's still the same book. Guess what happened? Almost overnight, he said, half a million copies got sold, then a million, then two million, then five million. People were buying it like crazy. He sold over 50 million copies of his book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, all wow. because he changed the title. And so when I got home, so I, of course, I wrote Men Are From Mars on a three by five card, so I remember it. But when I got home, two things happened. One is I realized this is a metaphor, you know? Men are not really from a different planet. I mean, I know you might think we're from a different planet. <laughs> okay. you know, so a lot of women, the way we act, you know, ah, we're not really from a different planet. So let me start there. But, you know, but it's a metaphor. You know, we're not from a different planet. But he's basically saying, you know, men are almost so different sometimes that it's like they're from Mars and women are from Venus, the god of love. <laughs> or the planet, you know, Venus is the god of love. Mm -hmm. And so I realized also that this is your brain, hold, the guy who was holding an egg, he wasn't holding a brain, but he was holding an egg. But he said, this is your brain. And, it, and they probably came up with the idea because they're probably sitting around a conference table and they said, okay, we have to do an ad for drugs, anti-drugs. So what happens when you take drugs? Well, it fries your brain. Well, okay, what else gets fried? An egg. Why don't we have an egg and drop it into a sizzling frying pan and say, there's your brain on drugs. And that's how they came up with it. And I went like, wow, it's a metaphor. Are metaphors the secret to emotional selling? Or at least one of the secrets? So when I got home, I dumped the passion box on my bed because it was I need a big space. So that's so many examples. And I realized that metaphors are is one of 14 brain triggers at the heart of emotional selling. I thought my brain was going to explode. It's like I figured out all these different things. And so I started, you know, I was as a consultant, I started applying it to clients and we started exploding sales. I had these three guys who had a construction company who after 10 years had $2 million of sales. Hey, that's not bad, right? 10 million, uh, 2 million after 10 years. Ha ha ha. <laughs> I applied Brain Goo as one of the first companies I ever did. And we went from two to 10 million in one year and they reached 32 million two years later. In fact, they hassled me. I took them from two to 10 million in one year just by applying brain glue. And they said, hey, Bond, it was supposed to be 12 million because I always say, you know, what's your goal? And I said, shut up. <laughs> they bought each other brand new uh, BMW. It was like the biggest one you can get and all that stuff. They couldn't believe how much cash they're getting. You know, my, when you start getting a lot of money, it changes how people act. And But they started like laughing. But, uh, but I realized like, well, this is really powerful. And so I started applying it. So let me give you some examples of people who apply this, okay? Now, the fun thing is it works with jokes too, okay? Because you can actually create jokes with this. I'll tell you some jokes in a couple of minutes. But uh, so there's a mom and her son, and they're watching Shark Tank on TV. And they fall in love with Shark Tank and that whole idea of having a side hustle of creating this extra source of income. And they said, wouldn't it be cool if we can invent something, sell it, and then get on Shark Tank and maybe get become millionaires or whatever. You know, a lot of people become so successful who make it on Shark Tank. So it took about a month, that, you know, because you don't always come up with an idea right away. You know, they're thinking we have to come up with something that's really good. You know, it's got to be a good product. And so uh, the mom was um, had... Um, a constipation. 
And she was yeah, pretty serious constipation. So the doctor told her, whenever you're in the bathroom on the toilet, you know, if you can raise your feet six or eight inches off the ground, it helps the shape of your body and it actually helps you because you have constipation. And so she found it really works. This is really fantastic. And then they went, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we use that as a product? We create a toilet stool that people can have in the bathroom that are sort of wraps around the toilet. So it looks like it, it, you don't notice it unless you want to you use, you know, you want to use it and you just slide it out and you put your feet on it. They said, wow, that was really great. But they said, like, what would be a good name for it? He said, well, toilet stool, yeah, that doesn't sound very good. My wife said, they should have called it the stool stool, but I don't think that's a good name for it. Okay. <laughs> um, but the, they're thinking toilet stool. I don't like the word toilet, you know. What a, what's another word for toilet? Potty. Oh, you're kind of squatting. Squatty potty. Yeah. Let's call it <laughs> squatty potty. I they, remember that. Sales yeah. exploded. They started selling it online. Sales exploded. They eventually got on Shark Tank, and they all, I think all the people on Shark Tank wanted to invest in their company. Their sales, you know, in just a few years, reached a hundred million dollars of sales. A hundred, all because they came up with this name. Now, if they had the product, they would have called it the toilet stool. Do you think it would have been as successful as a squatty potty? No. no. There's something <laughs> fun about squatty potty, and they started making a ton of money. Now, there's a woman. You know, so we have a lot of people who advertise on social media, right? So here's a woman and a lot of people spend money on to advertise or promote the, themselves on social media, right? So how about a mom, a stay-at-home mom who spends zero and has more than 5 million fans, okay? How does she come up with more than 5 million fans? So she she's a stay-at-home mom and she's thinking, okay, why don't I create a Facebook page for myself? Um, so what do I want to call it? So mommy, mommy needs a rest. Oh, it's exhausting with kids. Okay. Mommy needs time to herself. I know what mommy needs. Mommy needs vodka. <laughs> <It's a> crazy <laughs> name. Well, I'm sitting, how does she get 5 million fans? Okay. So I must have a friend who liked her, who was a, a fan of hers and shared a post of hers and she has really good posts, but a lot of people have good posts and you don't have 5 million fans. Okay. She's been zero. So I was, you know, so. I was looking at the post and I went, oh, that's pretty funny. That's a pretty good post. And I see it's by, from Mommy Needs Vodka? What's that? Clicked on the post, clicked on the link, took me to her page. I love the post that she has on her page and I became a fan. You know, she originally wasn't making money, but now she makes money because she's selling things because she realized I got over 5 million fans. I might as well sell them something, you know? But it's just like, wow, you know, you start to realize like when you understand how these things work, how brain glue works, brain glue tools work, then it, it actually triggers the brain so you can actually make a lot of money. And I never realized that. But as I started realizing like these brain triggers, it's like, so here, let me try this on you guys. Okay. Jack and Jill went up the hill. hill. Oh, we all know that. <laughs> I'm not sure everybody who's listening knows that, right? That's right. So what was the last time you heard that? You know, for me, it was like maybe 10, 20, maybe 50, 60 years ago. I'm old, okay? And yet we remember, I could be on my deathbed and someone says, Jack and Joe went up, then I go, hell, to the hell of water, you know? We remember it because rhyme sticks to the brain like glue. So I started to realize like how many, you know, how many, like squatty potty is rhyme, you know, and people, and rhyme is one of many brain glue tools that are really profound and powerful. And when people take, rhyme and plug it into what they're selling it becomes you know either from your the name of your product or uh the slogan or a description of your product then it sticks to the brain like glue and it works with kids so they're telling me i, I was they're, they're talking about the, how dangerous it is for kids to, to get involved with a stranger you know if a strange stranger wants you in your car or something like that then what do they call it they call it danger, danger. That's exactly it. Exactly. <laughs> you got it. Okay. And it's yeah. powerful That's because it's yeah. you know, yeah. it sticks to the brain. And so there's certain things that stick to the brain like glue, and you can use those tools. You know, it's just uh, there's you know, there's trigger words, okay? So I don't, you know, don't want to get too carried away with the trigger words, but let me give you some examples. Um, I said this before, so you guys know the answer to this, okay? Just before we got on. But what does um uh, Richard Branson, Madonna, and olive oil have in common. You guys know. Virgin. Virgin. Virgin 
you know, virgin olive oil. I mean, virgin olive oil, but yeah, you know, it's it's clean. It's the bare, you know, there's virgin like a virgin. Yeah. <laughs> for the very first time, <laughs> helped Madonna become a blockbuster success. Yeah. And for Richard Branson, it was, uh, you know, he's he borrowed money from his dad. He dropped out of high school and he had almost no money. He borrowed some money from his dad to start a, a magazine to for um, musicians. And then eventually he decided he was going to start a record company uh, because, you know, people started knowing him. He was actually had a very successful magazine. And so he wanted to come up with a name that would really stand out from the crowd. And he thought, why don't we do it? Virgin Records. The rest, as they say, is history. I was talking to this lady who's in uh, uh, Texas and she says, yeah, he's got Virgin Hotels in Texas, all over Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got Virgin Airlines, Virgin Galactic, you know, all that stuff. But he recognizes it's a trigger word. So I was thinking of, um, so would you ever call your uh, your podcast dirty? The dirty podcast, I wouldn't, you know. <laughs> but the word dirty, I was. this is my dirty week, okay? I was thinking like the word dirty is a trigger word. And so we think of dirty dancing. Do you ever see the movie Dirty Dancing? Yeah. No, I've seen yes. the movies Dirty Dirty Harry. You know, there's the movie Dirty Rotten Scoundrels that became successful. I'm old enough to remember uh, the Dirty Dozen. So I was trying to get um, um, people who work for magazines and newspapers, major magazines and newspapers, to read my book and review it, do a review of my book. And so I found uh, major writers from several magazines. I found for like 22 magazines and newspapers. And I sent them emails and it was my dirty week. So I thought I'd use the word dirty in the email. So my subject line was the dirty truth about an article you wrote. <laughs> and I sent it out to these people within 24 hours. And these people get lo overloaded with, you know, with emails within 24 hours, two of them immediately contacted me and said, okay, you got me. <laughs> you know, okay. <laughs> I said the dirty truth about an article you wrote. And I said, I use the word dirty truth because that's a trigger word in my book, blah, blah. So I wasn't trying to trick them, but I did hook them with the, uh, with the headline, but they responded and said, okay, you got me with that dirty truth thing. Okay. Send me your book. I will, I'll do a review on it. And they and, responded right away. Wow, that's awesome. So when we realized, you know, like the, the trigger words and how they work. So, how, so there's this guy who has um, a, a business with a friend that coaches people in advertising and his name is David Baer, B-A-E-R. And so I'm listening to him and I'm going like, oh, I got a perfect, I can't even remember the name of his business, their business. And I said, I have the perfect name for your business, Bare Naked Advertising. <laughs> partner starts laughing and going, that is perfect. And he goes, no, I don't think I want it because I don't think I want naked next to my name, you know. But I said, you know, people will remember it. And it's, you know, it's like Naked Juice. You know, Naked Juice was started, it was not started by a giant company. It was started by a couple of individuals who wanted natural juice. You know, it doesn't have preservatives or anything else. And they're competing with Odwalla, which is owned by Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. And so they said, well, why don't we call it naked juice? So they came up with the word naked juice, but they put the word naked small because they were kind of embarrassed. You know, and sales were kind of OK, but they finally hired a graphic designer, a graphic artist. And he said, we should make the word naked big <laughs> so people see it. And they're like, you think we should? He said, yeah, yeah, we think you should. Okay, fine. The rest of they say is history. It became a blockbuster. It passed on Walla to become the number one natural juice in America. Okay. I think they eventually got bought up, but you know, they were not bought out yet and they passed on Walla, which was owned by Coca-Cola. You think Coca-Cola has a lot of money? You know, so it's yeah. like it's hard to realize some of the tools. It's really fun. There's one that's called uh, because I talked about rhyme. There's one called a chiasmus. So rhyme is like A, B, A, B. It rhymes, it rhymes, okay? Chiasmus is, the, is a flip, okay? So uh, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. My wife's, my wife's hates, it's one of her, the songs that she hates the most. If you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with, okay? <laughs> not her favorite song, okay? Um, but it's a flip, you know? All for one and one for all. Okay, yeah. it's a flip. Um, I loved uh, Malcolm X. So Malcolm X, the civil rights activist. Uh, and people loved him because of what he represented, but they also loved him because of how he said things. He said, we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. The rock landed on us. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it sticks to the brain. 
And it's, you know, it's more powerful than if he says, you have no idea how hard it is being a black person in America. Certainly back then, it was worse. But he also had the, a famous phrase that a lot of people don't know. He actually said it, which is, when you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So let's, so there's um, this family that's starting a, um, a hamburger place. Okay. Hamburger restaurant. They don't have enough money to have a full restaurant, but they have enough money that they can have a drive through So they're going to make it a drive through restaurant. They're competing with McDonald's and Burger King and everything else. They're in California, but they're now moving across the country because they're so successful. And so they're thinking like, you know, we we have to have it as a drive through. We can put it a good location near McDonald's and Burger King and all that stuff. But we have to come up with a really cool name. So they came up with the name In and Out Burger. I was gonna say, don't say In and Out. <laughs> you got it. Now yeah. In and Out also means sex to a lot of us. Okay. So I remember we're driving down the street and you go in and out. <laughs> what the heck's that? Now you have to have a good product. Okay. If you have a crappy product, then nobody's you know. People might come and buy it once or try it and then they'll never buy it again. But we have lots of people that have really good products, but you struggle. And Bringle helps you stop struggling. In and out, they became a blockbuster that's owned by a family. It's not a public company or anything else. It's not a franchise. And they're made, they're rolling in dough. They're making so much money. Um, I work with because they understood the concept of chiasmus as a flip, you know. It's uh it's really powerful when you start to understand the tools. And there are, you can use them in phrases. I work with uh, Warren Buffett's team on his way to becoming really rich. He started buying companies. And uh, but so Warren Buffett loves brain glue type tools. OK, he has this great phrase. Um, it's uh, um, when only when the tide goes out, do you discover who's been swimming naked? It's like, what? <laughs> That's too big. <laughs> what he's basically saying is only when times get tough, do you realize who's capable and who's competent. But if he said that, you'd go like, mm, okay, yeah, I can really, you know. But when he say, only when the tide goes out, do you discover who's been swimming naked? It's like, well, okay, <laughs> well, that makes a lot of sense. Right, that certainly like, gets your attention. <laughs> that's exactly it. It gets your attention. Yeah. There are jokes. I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about this one? I'm old, so I can relate to this one, okay? I'd rather wake up and pee than pee and wake up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they work you know um yeah may west who was in the early days of uh, the movie industry um she has a lot of really good ones she would say um uh good girls go to heaven bad girls go everywhere <laughs> like, i don't know if that's a good slogan but anyway you know but she said uh, uh it's better to be looked over than overlooked mm -hmm. yeah. you know she said women like a man with a past but they prefer a man with a present Go <laughs> for the present. You know? He also has this other one. Hopefully, I'm not going to offend anyone, but a hard man is good to find. <laughs> I don't want to get too much into that. But anyway. but she was great. Yeah, she was really good. Oh, yeah. Don't even be on t shirts. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There you go. But so, yeah, just humor works well. It isn't always humor, but humor works well. I'll give you some examples in business, uh, business things. But if you're trying to impress somebody or if you're trying to persuade somebody, uh, metaphors work, as I was talking about men are from Mars, women are from Venus and stuff like that. So I have a friend who has a closed mind. He's a closed minded guy. And I wanted to say, you know, you have to have a more of an open mind. But if I said that, he'd just get mad at me. He'd like, Shut up, you know. And so I came I thought, hey, I know Bringle. Let me apply a metaphor. So open. What works better when it's open? An umbrella, a parachute. A book, you know, you can have a book on your table, but if you don't open it, you won't get benefit from it. So I thought parachute. Oh, okay. So I said to him, you know, your mind is like a parachute. It works better when it's open. And he goes, hmm, okay. Okay. You know, I can relate. <laughs> and so like, it was fun applying this, you know, applying, applying these tools. So I have a joke. So I have these three women who are very religious. And so I had to come up with a real, kind of religious joke to, to, to open them up. So they would be, when you tell somebody a joke, they become much more open to what you're talking about. And so I said, so I came up with a joke and they started laughing. And I said, um, so a little girl comes up to his mommy, to her mommy and says, mommy, daddy says we came from Abe. So you say we came from Adam and Eve. Honey, daddy's talking about his family. I'm talking about my family. Okay. And they they loved that when they started laughing. But Hilarious. they were much more open 
to yeah. hear what I was going to say. You know? Absolutely. So this is so powerful. So like you, you wrote the book Brain Glue that has like the different types of like you use metaphors, you use rhyme, you use humor to help people like um, make more meaningful connections or make meaningful names for their businesses. Do you actually coach them too, or do you just like, refer them to your book, or do you have coaching sessions with them to help them with this? Or? And some okay. people ask me for coaching, but mostly it's the book. The book is designed in such a way so it's really easy. If people get hooked on it, you know, they get really hooked on it because it is so easy when you understand it. It isn't easy if you just throw stuff at them. But, you know, it takes all 14 of the tools and it takes one tool at a time and it gives you examples, some jokes, but products and things like that. And you start going, oh, I never even thought of that. Right. And then it says, here's an example you can try. And it gives you an example so you can try it. So let me give you an example of one that uses three. Most You can use just one brain glue tool and actually have massive success, as a lot of people do. But I'll give you a couple of examples uh, that have a lot. So um, so Dreyer's uh, ice cream was back in the started in the days of the Great Depression, okay, in America, long before our times. Um, and uh, they came up with Rocky Road ice cream, okay? So Rocky Road uses three brain glue tools, okay? The first one is when you open up Rocky Road ice cream, it has rocks inside it. Did you know that? <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> it has <laughs> it's chocolate ice cream with nuts and marshmallows. But it's bumpy like a Rocky Road, so they call it Rocky Road. They thought that would be fun. The second thing it has is alliteration, a repetition of sounds, Rocky Road. Ruh, ruh, okay? And so that's the second thing. And... I never realized that when I started discovering this, I started realizing how many products that are blockbusters use alliteration or repetition of sound. Coca-Cola, Best Buy, PayPal, TikTok, Lululemon, okay? TikTok, if they call it, I have I have a son and three daughters. We have a son and three daughters, not all just mine, okay? And um, my youngest daughter is a fan of TikTok. I said, yeah, it's a social media platform. She said, no, it's not. You don't, you know, you're just saying that. I said, no, no, check it out. She checked it out and came back and said, yeah, it's social media. If they called it the, the Chinese social media platform, you think it would be as successful as TikTok? <laughs> oh, you know? No, it's just but alliteration used work. So we have um, a metaphor, Rocky Road, because it's not really rocks, but it's bumpy like a Rocky Road. And then alliteration and repetition of sound, r -r -r Rocky Road. And then the third thing is humor. You don't have to use any of the, you can use just one of them, but they use all three. Back in the day of the Great Depression, the Great Depression was called a Rocky Road. And so their concept was, we're all on a Rocky Road anyway. We might as well have Rocky Road ice cream. And people would start laughing as they said, yeah, let's get that, you know. Yeah. A lot of people don't know. Um, so Marilyn Monroe's story uses a bunch of tools, okay? There's one tool that's called asymmetry, which is an something that's unbalanced. My wife loves uh, symmetry. She loves that. If you ever see, see a guy and he has a, a one eye that's a, a sort of a lazy eye, it drives my, my my wife nuts because she said you can cover up half his face and he looks like one person. You cover up the other half, he looks like a totally different person. And it drives her nuts more than me, but that's the way she is. So, um, so um, her name was Norma Jean Mortensen, okay? And she was a, a model. And so her, her manager said, you know, Norma Jean isn't that really good in, uh, good a name for models back then. Why don't you call yourself Marilyn? Would you be willing to do that? And she went, okay, sure. And then her wife, her her mom's maiden name was Monroe, Marilyn Monroe. So she had alliteration. She didn't know it, but she went, you know, Marilyn Monroe, that sounds good. The second thing she had was there was a famous actress back then named Jean Harlow, who was massively famous and successful back then. And Jean Harlow had platinum blonde hair and Marilyn Monroe's hair was brown. And so she went, you know, I want to be successful. Let me get, let me go to the same hairdresser. She was in Southern California. So she was, she was able to do this. Let me go to the same hairdresser as uh, Jean Harlow and get my hair colored the same color as hers. Okay. So she did. So now she's Marilyn Monroe with platinum blonde hair, but she has a beauty mark. She had a beauty mark on her left cheek and she decided to cover it up just in case, you know, she didn't want everybody to see it. One day she's looking at photographs of Jean Harlow and she realizes Jean Harlow in some photographs has a beauty mark on her cheek and in some photographs it's on her chin. And she goes, wait a second. I bet she doesn't even have a beauty mark. I bet she's just putting a dot on her face. 
So she decides to darken the dot on her on her face, the beauty mark, and suddenly she it was about that time she became massively successful, and she believed it was because of that dot on her face. So there's Cindy Crawford. Cindy Crawford is a supermodel, the first supermodel. And Cindy Crawford, in her biography, she talks about how she has a beauty mark, a birthmark above her left lip. And she begged her mom, Mommy, can you please take me to the doctor and get this removed? She says now in her biography, I am so glad my mom never got it removed because I believe a large reason why I became a supermodel is because of that dot on over my lip. You know? Wow. <laughs> like, wow, really? Like, that's what it takes? You know? And it's just, uh, they're famous people. Like, there's... um. Yeah, there's, you know, there's a famous people that will have like, you know, an eye patch on one eye and suddenly people go like, whoa, what's that? Because we're used to balance and symmetry, you know? And so, yeah, it's just when you start to understand these tools, you start to realize like, wow, I can like apply this and it's really cool. Like, let's pretend, for example, you were coming up with a glue, okay? You want to, you have a glue and you know, this is going to be lots of fun and well, a lot of people will sell my glue. So how do you use brain glue tools? Well, Gorilla the first thing, glue. pardon? Gorilla glue. You got, you see, <laughs> there you go, April. April. Gorilla glue. So how does, so what is Gorilla glue? First, it's, uh, it's so, it's, it's made from gorillas. Did you know that? No, it's, it's not. strong. That's right. But it's strong as a gorilla. So they use a metaphor. It's strong. How strong is it? It's strong as an animal. So you think it's as strong as an elephant or whatever else. And then they use alliteration. Goo goo. What's an animal that has goo? Gorilla. Oh, gorilla glue. And it works. And it sticks to the brain. It, you know, these things stick to the brain. We're so overwhelmed with knowledge and information that if you can come up with something that sticks to the brain, you know, people remember it. That's, that's awesome. true. And it's just it's something, there's something called anchoring, which is where you take something that's already in the brain and you use that, okay? Or you twist it somehow. And I'll give you an example of who used it and who twisted it, okay? So um, let's say you're coming up with a dandruff shampoo. So people know that it's your head and your shoulders, okay? So we know for the little kids, head and shoulders. I can't even do this. I'm not coordinated anymore. <laughs> head and shoulders, knees and toes, eyes, ears, mouth and nose. Yeah. They do that. Almost everybody knows that phrase. Why don't we call it head and shoulders? Yeah. The rest, as I say, is history. became okay, massively successful, okay? So there was Bobby Flay. And Bobby Flay is um, a chef. And he ended up getting a show on the Food Channel, on the Food Network. And so he focuses on grilling. And so he wants to come up with a name for his show. And so he's thinking, grill. What does it sound like, grill? What are some words that it sounds like? Girl. Okay, so what's a phrase that uses the word girl? Boy meets girl. Why don't I call it boy meets grill? Grill, yeah. yeah. That's the, that's the, Coming up with that name, Boy Meets Grill, made him a monster of success wow. because he picked something that's already in, in, the, in your head and he just twisted it suddenly, you know, slightly and suddenly became massively successful. <clears throat> I'm telling you, brain glue is fun. You yeah, know? No, it certainly so is. Yeah, so, go ahead, so April. What if you call, instead of brain glue, the psychology of selling? Did you <laughs> okay, think so let me... that it would be as, as, um, as successful as it's been? No, and I'm going to tell you, I, I got tortured. Yes. Okay? I got tortured because of it, okay? So Jack Jack Canfield wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, which is, by the way, a metaphor, okay? And alliteration, that soap, soup soul, okay? Mm -hmm. He actually was telling me that he originally wrote, it was, the book was going to be, his book was going to be called um, 100, it's 101 Motivational Stories. So he's going to call it 101 motivation, Motivational Stories That Will Change Your Life. That was what they were originally going to call it. Then he, he was bothering him because it was just too logical a term. And so it took about a, a month later before he named the book fully. He woke up and he went, well, chicken soup makes you feel better often if you're feeling sick. And so why don't I call it chicken soup for the spirit? So it didn't sound perfectly right, but it was close. Chicken soup for the spirit. So he had about a week, uh, a weekend of sleepless nights. And then he went S-O-U-P, soup, S-O-U-L, soul chicken soup for the soul that works better and he came up with the name chicken soup for the soul okay <laughs> so i introduced my book to him he loved it he said this is mind-blowing this is so good i he forced everybody he bought copies for everybody in his company he's got lots of people in his company he sold 500 million books by the way 500 million chicken soup for the soul books can you imagine that's just there, there aren't that many people in america that's how many books he sold more than but anyway but he's telling me that um so uh 
and he's forcing he's forcing everybody in his company not just to read it but to apply it okay because he has more than 60 other bestsellers but most of the bestsellers even though the books are fantastic most of the bestsellers are because he's jack hanfield people know him and he's famous okay so he feels bad because there's so many of his books that he could have applied brain glue to it to get, give him a catch your title. But the name of my book was Sell More with the Right Brain Marketing Strategy. And he said, I, I said, you know, he said, first I have to apologize. He said, you know, I have to tell you, I'm really pissed at you. I said, I'm sorry. He said, I started picked up your book and just started glancing at it. And I couldn't put the damn thing down. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Can I use that as a quote? You know, he said. I'll give you all kinds of quotes. Your book is fantastic. I'll give you all kinds of quotes on one condition. You have to change the title of your book. You're torturing us by teaching us that it can't be logical. It has to be emotional. And you've got a logical title. <laughs> the whole book is about brain glue. you got to change the title of your book to brain glue. And when you publish a book, if you get like 80, 90, 100 uh, testimonials uh, on, on Amazon, then Amazon helps you to promote it even more. And I had like 80 or 90 testimonials and he, i said do you really have to he said yes you really have to you're teaching us it's got to be emotional you got to have an emotional title in your book come on it's only <laughs> right man right. It's only right. <laughs> i know really we got, we got well, a couple of minutes left yeah. uh, where can people find you um so uh, i'm hiding no i'm not hiding <laughs> no don't hide show yourself <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's lots of fun well first you guys can get, anyone can get mini, if you go to minibrainglue.com, M-I-N-I, minibrainglue.com, you can actually get a free sample of part of the book, which is really cool. And so that's fine. Uh, but, and also it's available on Amazon, uh, you know, but minibrainglue.com is an easy way to do it. You can do that. You can also email me. And also, if you apply this, and a lot of people are applying this, but send me an email. I'm at jbond, so James Bond, so jbond at fasterbuyer.com because I'm helping you get faster buyers. Okay. Awesome. And okay. let me know because people are letting me know, like I've applied this and I'm making so much money now. I can't believe it. It's so much fun. You know? And I mean, and, and I saw somebody who had a t-shirt that said life sucks and then you die. And I'm like, no, yeah. this is life <laughs> right now. That's a terror. I, although I do know somebody who can use that t-shirt by the way, he's very, very negative, but no, we've got to enjoy life right now. And so just take a squatty potty going back to that. They came up with a name that works and rhymes, but it's also fun to talk about. Absolutely. You know, but yeah. So if somebody wanted, you know, do mini bring glue.com, that's an easy way to do it. And you can connect with me. Awesome. Okay. I have to tell you that your, your book is very powerful the way you described everything and it, it, it will help a lot of people. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to diving in myself and y'all get connected and get the, go ahead and get the book. Cause that's, that can get your business up and running and get your name. If you're having a, I guess, if you're having issues with your names and things of that, that nature, your books that you want to write. It's so powerful. That's great. I never really thought about it in the, those uh, particular way. Uh, we've all heard about all these things you've described, but you just never really thought about, hey, apply it to yourself too, you know? So it's so, so good. It's been a, such a pleasure having you on with us tonight. Oh, yeah. Janice and April, you guys rock. I mean, you guys have <laughs> podcasts on. So I'm very, I'm so proud and excited to have been on your show. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you oh, so much. much. I think it's really good. It's been an honor to have you on here as well think it's really cool how you have um explained branding and marketing in a way that is so easily understandable and retainable you know because like you said we don't retain information all the time so you've made it very very cool um yes. I really enjoyed our time with you and look forward to checking out your book absolutely you. we'd love to have you back on in the future as well and uh thank you again for coming on with us tonight thank, thank, you. You. <laughs> thank you so much y'all have, have a, a great night. night yeah thank you guys for watching Bye, y'all. Bye.